I think I think I think you can make stories sound really interesting. Sonny, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. If you could come up with your top five managers of all time, who would they be? How would the order look? I mean, and, and no no certain order, you know, um of course. Well, you gotta put them in order, are. Sonny. That's why we're putting yeah, you on I the do? spot. Really? You gotta put them in order. God, that that's pretty tough. I know, you know it is. You, you, you know, um um I mean, God, that's really hard. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, Bobby is probably number one. Um, um, you know, and Jimmy Hart, and and you got some contemporary like Paul Heyman, and and um, um, God, you know, I mean, there's so many others. I mean, you know, I guess we all, you know, Colonel Parker, you know, and 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 uh, um, even even you know, Colin, who was a wrestler, but he he did a great deal. Of of uh, uh, I, I think he did more for Luchador than anybody else, you know, um, from the camera and and behind the camera. I have to say, you know, certainly the the Eric did a lot to bring the wrestlers in. Of course, you know, it, it was because of you know three hour television we had with Nitro and Thunder, and we needed talent. That's that's one of the reasons, you know, all this cruiserweight thing happened, where we where we exchange talent exchange program that I was involved in. You know, bringing everybody from Chris Benoit to, you know, Jericho to Dragon. Um, um, of course, you know, I'm talking about the Dragon, he's also more Dragon. And, and, um, you know, I think, I think those are the guys who certainly changed the face of wrestling as he was known before. Um, and, and, and the mixture of, of Japanese wrestling and, and, and I think Mexican, uh, Richard wrestling. And, you know, Asai, uh, 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 Moon Salt with Ultima Dragon. You know, even to this day, he, he, he's internationally, you know, still relevant. You know, he just, he was just in North Korea with Inoki. Um, so, you know, he, he, he's truly the, 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 you know, one of the, one of the heroes of mine. You know, even to this day. Well, I have a great appreciation for the Ultimo Dragon. He's one of my favorites of all time. And obviously he finally got, you know, after many years of, uh, accolades in WCW, he finally moved on to the WWE and injuries cut his reign, you know, cut his time short there. I, I guess what would you have projected for him, Sonny, if he hadn't got hurt? Do you think he would have got over with the WWE audience and continued his legacy or would he have been lost in the shuffle? I, I, you know, he, he, well, I, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate thing about as far, as far as his talent goes, I think he could have, you know, he, he's just as good as, you know, no disrespect to Ray Mysterio, just as good as Ray Mysterio. You know, um, I think his downfall is that he didn't speak English. I think that's all his downfall. But he, you know, but he is truly, if you look at the international side of it, he's truly above everywhere else. Every, everyone else, he is truly. And he's, you know, he's friend with Fidel Castro's son. He goes to Cuba all the time. I mean, he's truly over all over the world. You know, so I, I, I think, I think it depends, it depends on what, what you consider. You know, I mean, if you look at that United States television as a pro wrestling, um, yeah, you know, unfortunate thing happened to him, and, and but you know, he he could have been, and and um, um, here's a man who speaks, you know, four languages, so you know, you tell me who who could have, you know, I mean, they could have really done a lot with him if they wanted to. This is the undisputed wrestling show. We're talking to wrestling manager. Extraordinaire, Sonny Ono. I'm going to kick it back over to Zane Paisley. Zane, what do you got for Sonny? Well, Sonny, uh, here in a, in a few months will be the 20th anniversary of uh, the big event at the Mayday Stadium in uh, North Korea, the collision in Korea. It was a show that was co-promoted by World Championship Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Can, can you tell us about the atmosphere that was led into that? I, I've seen some... Things with Ric Flair, where he described uh, the hotel rooms being bugged and stuff like that. Can can you tell us about your experience in that? Well, they, they, you know, they warned us before that. I mean, before we went there, this is North Korea. Only only Americans who've been there before you either been captured or shot down. So you figure it out. Um, you know, don't be insulting people. You know, everything everything you say will be recorded. Um, I remember Scott Norton on the first day complaining about hotel room and food, and imagine that. Next thing you know, there's a guy with a machine gun sitting on his front door. <laughs> so, wow, and I asked just him a question food? like, why, why do you hate our country? Now, you know, people were freaking out because they didn't have, they took all our passport when we got there. And I said, hey, guys, we're here. What are you going to do? 
you got DMZ to the south, and you got China border to the north. So we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so be nice to these people. <laughs> so, so were you, think, did you, did you speak Korean? You know, were you kind of a liaison between the, uh, the wrestlers and, and the, uh, well, and I know, uh, Anoki was the, the, one of the promoters too, but did, you know, what was your role during that whole time? Um, I was there because this was a facilitated, uh, you know, us doing businesses in partnership with New Japan and you know to be the president of the company that's that's how we see that to go um, one of the funnest thing I had was we went you know I mean I was there as, as a because if I was a liaison between New Japan and WCW but one of the funnest memory I had was we went to visit uh, one of the famous um, Liki Dozan which is a very famous Japanese wrestler who was who happened to be North Korean um, who lived in Japan and became famous um we went to visit his grave site. And so after we visited the grave site, you know, it's kind of official visit kind of thing. And, and as I'm walking back, we're walking back to the, the garden and to the car, you know, somebody's punched me in the back of my head, kind of not really hitting me, but, you know, and I turn around and it's Muhammad Ali punched me in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. So, so we squared off and <laughs> needless to say, I, I, I didn't kick him and, and he didn't punch me. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the things thing. you Saved you both. Yeah, Would you and, have you know, to rough him up, Sonny? Yeah. Yep. So we could have had another, uh, had a Sonny Ono versus Muhammad Ali battle in a wrestling ring. Okay. Yeah, and My- you know, Ali, Muhammad was so nice. He actually signed the ring and signed that, that picture that he's standing over Sonny Liston. He actually signed a watch to, 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 to Sonny, and, and he gave me one of those fossil watches, you know, one of those limited edition watches he gave me one, so... Oh, very, very nice, nice man. Very cool. All right, Mr. Ono, my, my last question for you. In in okay. in, a, in a karate uh, matchup, who who would win, uh, yourself or Eric Bischoff? Eric won't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> now, if he, if he wrestled me, he'd kick my ass. Um, karate, I, you know, I don't know how many Warriors Cup International uh, National Championship he has. Uh, so that would be zero. Um, I have three, so, you know, I'm just saying. No, actually, all kidding aside, I kick boss. We're, you know, actually, Eric is much bigger than I am. I mean, he, he fought at like 155, 150 pounds. Um, and, 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 uh, uh, depends on, you know, depends on which format we fought at, but probably eight out of ten times, you'll probably kick my ass. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that because he also, the guy who was signing my check, so. <laughs> You know, the interesting thing, I, I guess, and, and I'm not, you know, I don't know this if this is fact or not. That's why I'm going to ask you about it. But the rumor always has it has it that uh, Ernest was signed by Eric Bischoff because he was training his son or or training Garrett or something like that with with martial arts. Is that accurate? Absolutely true. That's a okay. true story. Yeah, uh, 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 Eric was impressed with you know here's this pretty big guy, you know, moves like he does, and said, hey, yeah, but professional wrestling. And I think that's when, when the, the glacier, you know, the, the, the Mortal Kombat glacier thing was happening. And and I think that's that's you know, he got tied into that. Did did the cat ever really consider MMA at all or was it real was he really just wanting to, you know, stay in karate and he had to be convinced or, or by Eric well, he's or a great how? athlete, but you know, he's certainly a great athlete. I, I think he could have been Pretty good at it. I, you know, and a lot of things that we did, you know, I, I was kickboxing between 1975 and 1981. I was ranked number one in the world. I think, I think, I think we were certainly ahead of the time. So, uh, you know, we, we, we were fighting for, you know, chump change back in days, you know, and, 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 um, um, you know, look where UFC is now. So looking at, I guess, today's scene, obviously, since the last time we talked to you, things have changed a little bit on the scene. Uh, with the rumor, well, it's not rumors, it's fact. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's going to come out with his own promotion at some point. I guess, what do you think the odds are with the climate of professional wrestling the way it is, you know, the way we we are seeing business with WWE and then the massive drop-off with TNA and then Ring of Honor, the odds of Jeff Jarrett having a successful promotion, and if you believe he can, what does he need to do to be successful? I think Jeff needs to give just like WCW did, give alternatives. I think, I think, I think competition is good for WWE. And Jeff, you know, 
when he first started TNA, you know, he was kind enough to fly me to Vegas and, and, and you know, and offer me a position. Um, I, I, you know, he, 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 he's a real smart guy. And I think, I think the people who backing his program, such as people in television world and people in, people in Hollywood, I think he'll, he'll do really well. Um, if anybody can, he can. Um, and, and I, I think, I think, you know, not giving the same, oh, you know, predictable stuff is, 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 uh, uh, is one of the key. And I think, I think he can keep it fresh. And I think one of the reasons he showed up in Japan recently, as well, as well as in Europe, um, I think I think he he'll he'll bring a lot more international talent and into his program. I, I truly believe that. <laughs> so, what alternatives do you think he needs to do? I mean, what do you think he needs to bring to the table that's not being done now that you think can, you know, give him an avenue? Well, I I, I just believe that that uh, there's a place for, you know, not not something to repeat what WCW did, but I think WCW introduced American wrestling audience. <laughs> About Japanese wrestling, um, um, certainly, and 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 you know, lucha style wrestling, or or and ended up with the cruiserweight we had. I think it ended up being a hybrid of all three. I think you know a lot of action, uh, a lot of flying, um, and and I you know obviously that still plays now into become part of the mainstream main you know mainstream wrestling now. I think they're gonna adopt it into it now. You still do people do moonsault off the top, you know, on onto the um, uh, uh, floor. You know, those are things wasn't done before. Um, I think, I think, you know, athleticism, I think, certainly plays into it a lot more than we did before. Um, I, I think with, with 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 the international talent, I think I think um, Jeff Jarrett's promotion can certainly do that. Um, and looking forward to it. You know, you'll make it exciting. You'll make it different. You'll make it fresh. Um, you know. And um, one of the one of the one of the regret I have of all the wrestling is is the women pro wrestling from Japan that that they was never really given an opportunity to produce uh, you know to, to to flourish here even at WCW days um, you know aside from certainly the the, the good, you know a few of the great stars that we brought over and I was involved with Bo Nakano, Shigeru um, uh, you know of course Hokuto. And, and, you know, people who can work with people like Medusa who worked in Japan. Um, you know, and, and that's just a tip of iceberg. I'm talking about, you know, everybody from Cutie Suzuki to Kaoru and, and all the, all the, all the great talent, you know, um, Ozaki, all the, all those tiny little girls who can fly and, 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 uh, just amaze the audience, you know, I mean, I mean, those body stunts that they do off the top rope, I'm still amazed by it. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. You know, I mean, and, I, and I, I'm sitting at right at the ring sign, and I'm seeing this girl jump off the top, you know, top of the turnbuckle and stomp on somebody. Right on a mat, you know. Those, those are the things always, I mean, the thing they did always amazed me. And their work ethic was just second to none. So, you know, those are the kind of things that, that, that I wish that, 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 you know, maybe new promotion will, will give opportunities. Women aren't just, you know, just. A lot of things going on now about stereotyping women and, and this and that, and the image and that type of thing. You know, women are athletes. You know, don't kid yourself. I think they have much more uh, 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 tougher pain tolerance than the guys do. Um, and and uh, uh, just because they're they're treated as you know uh, not as equal in many places and many times, I think they work harder. And, and um, like I said, if, if you guys and any of the listeners out there. Listen, go to YouTube and look at some of the matches with, with you know, with, 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 uh, Bonacano and, 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 you know, Chikusa Nagayo and, uh, and all those four mentioned, you know, um, certainly with, with, uh, uh, Medusa. Amazing Kong, she was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing. I mean, go watch those and you tell me, you know, I mean, you gotta also remember, you know, Japanese matches are not television matches, so it doesn't end in, you know, eight minutes. You know, they, they go at it for, you know, 30, 45 minutes. And it, and it, it's just amazing when you watch it. And, 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 and if you guys are fans, go watch it. 